Hi, I'm Gwen from Crisis Support Services of Alameda County. I'm here with our Teens for Life program to talk to you about our crisis line and our text line and give you a brief overview on both of them. A little bit about Crisis Support Services. We're a nonprofit organization that is largely funded by Alameda County Behavioral Health. We run the county's crisis hotline. It's what we're mainly known for, but it's not all that we do. We also provide education and counseling services in addition to that. Our agency is made up of employees and of a lot of volunteers as well. We've been around for a long time, over 65 years, so we are very experienced in what we do. And lastly, we're local. We're based in Oakland, California. Now, before we begin, this presentation may include some challenging topics. We might talk about mental health, depression, suicide, and sometimes these topics can be a bit overwhelming or even triggering for some people. So be sure to watch this video wherever you feel safe and whenever you feel safe. If you do need emotional help or support immediately, I've provided two numbers that you can call, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline and our Crisis Hotline. If this is a medical or physical safety emergency, call 911. And lastly, this presentation is intended for ages 10 to 21. The learning objectives for today is that we'll be talking about our crisis hotline and our text line, why someone would call or text a crisis line, what do people talk about, and what happens on a call or a text. So let's get started with some crisis line basics. There are two numbers provided on the screen. The first is 1-800-309-2131. That is crisis support services, so that's us and that is for Alameda County residents. If you happen to live outside of Alameda County, you could call the number below that, which is the National Lifeline number. Our crisis line is free, it is open 24 seven, and we have translators available in over 140 different languages. We try to be really accessible to everyone in our community. An important thing about our crisis line is that the calls are private and confidential. There are a couple exceptions though to that confidentiality. A crisis counselor could not keep confidential if a caller calls in talking about the abuse of someone under 18 or over 65, if they say that they are a harm to someone else, or if they're in risk of suicide. Our crisis line is not intended to be a replacement for therapy. Therefore, most of our calls are pretty brief. It can be a great thing to do in addition to therapy though, and lastly, we have highly trained and skilled counselors, a majority of them actually being volunteer crisis counselors. Now moving on to our text line. So to access the text line, you would text the word SAFE to 20121. And there are some similarities between our text line and our crisis line. Um, both are free. They are both not intended to be replacements for therapy. Our text line also has highly trained and skilled counselors. Our texts are private and confidential with the same exceptions as our crisis line. The only differences really are that our text line is only open from 4 p.m. to 11 p.m., still seven days a week, and it's only in English. We don't have the same translation services that we do on our crisis line. Another thing about our text line is that our target aim is for Alameda County residents that are younger than 21 years old. Now, why would someone call or text a crisis line? One reason could be that maybe a trusted adult isn't available. Our crisis line is 24 seven. Also, someone might be afraid to tell someone what's happening or they don't know who to tell or how to tell them. They can start off with talking to us. We know friends might be available, but sometimes friends might not know about the situation or they might not take things seriously. Like I've mentioned before, our calls are private, our calls and texts are private and confidential. So our callers don't have to be worried that someone else might find out what they tell us. We don't gossip. Also, sometimes we get callers that call us in because they're worried about a friend or a family member and they don't know what to do. We can try to work with those callers and try to help them help that person. We have highly trained and experienced counselors that are here to provide support. It's what we do and it's what we're here for. 
And then when debating whether to call or text us, texting might be better because some people feel more comfortable texting. Like I said, our target aim is for 21 and under, so it might be more appropriate for them to text instead of call. And also it might be safer for some. Maybe there's been a change in living situation or daily routine or anything like that where there might not be that privacy anymore. And so it might be better to text instead of call us in that situation. And lastly, our counselors care, they want to help, and they're not here to judge. They want to make sure that the callers feel comfortable calling us. Now, what do people talk about on the crisis line? Well, anything really. Someone doesn't even need to be suicidal to call us in. I provided a chart here with a couple common topics that we talk to our callers about. This is definitely not all of it. We've talked to some callers about things that aren't on this list also. And so now you might be wondering what happens on a call or a text. So it typically starts off with a counselor answering the phone and introducing themselves. It might sound a little something like this. Crisis support, this is Gwen. And from there on out, the caller only really has to share what they feel comfortable sharing. So if that caller doesn't even want to tell us their name, they don't have to. They can remain anonymous. All the information we really get is what they tell us and caller ID. That's about it. And on the calls, our counselors are there to provide active listening. They're there to be really engaged, asking questions, getting clarification, because they want to make sure they're understanding what their caller is talking about so that they can provide them the right support and the right help. Our counselors will also offer emotional support and resources if needed. An important thing about our calls and our texts is that we really try to focus on the present moment. What is happening now? How are you feeling now? So with that in mind, when we try to, uh, when we try to end our calls, our counselors will often ask the callers what are they going to be doing after the call because they want to make sure that after we're done talking that they'll be still safe after the call because they might be going through something really overwhelming or stressful and so we want them to get out of that stressful and overwhelming moment. Another thing that might happen on a call or a text is that a counselor might remind the caller that it is private and confidential. They might do this early on so that the caller feels at ease and that they feel more comfortable sharing. Another thing that our, uh, that our counselors might do is that they might ask about thoughts of suicide. And I know this can be a little scary for some callers, especially if they're calling in for something unrelated to suicide. This is just what our counselors do because they want to make sure that when they're talking to a caller, that they're safe during that phone call. And if they're not safe, what can our counselors do to make sure that they are safe during the call? Now, some closing thoughts to finish us off. Our crisis line is intended for the caller to call us in and ask us for help about themselves, or it can be about a friend or a family member. It's a place where someone can freely express their thoughts and their feelings without judgment. Our counselors are there to offer emotional support to help that caller manage a very stressful and challenging moment in their life. And lastly, all of the calls and all of the texts are private and confidential. For, except for the things that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. And now to finish us off, I have some numbers here that I talked about earlier. We have our crisis line number, the national suicide number, as well as our text line number. And I actually have this in a more condensed version with an even more brief overview of the text and crisis line. We have them on our Teens for Life resource card. I'll link that down below in case you want to check it out or maybe print it. We are also very active on our social media. So if you want to know more about our resources or how we're staying active in our community, you can follow our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for watching this and learning more about your local crisis hotline and how you can help yourself or you can help a friend or a family member. If you're interested in our other videos, I'll have those linked down below as well, or you can check them out on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.